everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Nemeseek. And this is our third and final episode where we are covering these exclusive images from IGN and also reading some of the article with quotes from Johannes Roberts, who is the director of the upcoming Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City movie. And uh, and I wanted to have that some, you know, parts of those articles along with these images to give you a little bit more context because he's obviously talking about what's in these images for the most part in some of these quotes. And so that's why we're covering this. I hope you guys have been enjoying the videos and this is our third and final one for today. And hopefully now that we got these exclusive first look at the movie, we'll get more information coming up. Um, you know, I'm really hoping. Hopefully we'll get a trailer not too long from now too with this movie coming out November 24th and it's gonna be released by Sony. Hopefully maybe in front of Venom, that would be really cool in October to get a trailer for this. I would really love that. Um, but let me know your thoughts down below as we go through this. Uh, this is the image here of Lisa Trevor, my favorite villain and monster from all the Resident Evil games. She was added in the remake of Resident Evil 1. So after we go through the image here and look at it from a couple different angles uh, and talk about the actress, the wonderful actress who's playing her, then we'll show off some gameplay footage of Lisa Trevor in action from the Resident Evil 1 remake video game from one of my recent playthroughs. So the final image here is uh, again exclusively revealed to IGN and so we're just sharing it and talking about it. So if you want to see the full article, if you've only seen one of these videos, I made three covering the whole article, but if you want to go read the article yourself, I highly recommend you do it. Link is down below. Check it out. Um, so we have here from Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. Lisa Trevor, played in the film by Marina Mazeppa, who is a contortionist, she's an actress, she's a stunt person, like, she's awesome. Ever since they announced her as playing Lisa Trevor, actually, they didn't officially announce her, uh, she actually posted on her Instagram that she was a picture of her getting the makeup done for Lisa Trevor, and she put in the hashtag Lisa Trevor, and people freaked out, including myself, and I'm like, oh my god, Lisa Trevor is going to be in this movie, and now we got an official look at her. So obviously in the games, uh, and by the way, please follow Marina. She is amazing. I'll put a link to her, uh, you know, Instagram down below. She's super awesome. She'll post stuff on there of like her doing stunts or making short films with friends or, you know, just going out and having a night on the town or going to the beach or whatever. She's just very, um, a carefree person, but also very focused and, and, uh, you know, hustles and, you know, works really hard. And it's really cool to see someone like this, you know, she's like really into playing these characters and these monsters, which she's done in other movies as well. And, now she's going to be here as Lisa Trevor, my like I said, my favorite Resident Evil monster. So I'm so pumped. And it's because of the tragedy. Like, I love monsters with tragic backgrounds, like Jason Voorhees. And Lisa, to me, is kind of like a Jason Voorhees type. Um, in the games, Lisa is the teenage daughter of the architect of the Spencer Mansion. So George Trevor, um, he is the one who designed the Spencer Mansion for Oswell E. Spencer, the guy who runs Umbrella. So this guy who runs Umbrella, he, you know, they find this flower in Africa. From it, they're able to develop the progenitor virus. And then from the progenitor virus, they're starting to work on, you know, developing the T-virus. And he decides to pick a town in Raccoon, or the town of Raccoon City to be the house and nesting spot of, you know, his corporation, Umbrella. And that's where one of their main facilities was going to be in this small town where they could bring jobs to. And, you know, people would just blindly work for them, you know, and, and maybe not raise an eyebrow or ask too many questions because everyone's, you know, that it's a, a town that's dying and he's probably sees himself as saving the small town. And um, it's just neat because that's a very real thing that does happen a lot of times. And uh, and obviously a lot of times when companies come in to do that, it's not ultimately good for the town. So uh, in this case, that's obviously what's happening. So Lisa is the daughter of George Trevor. Um, he was the architect that built the Spencer Mansion in the Raccoon Forest, and he went missing once while on a walk. Now, obviously, I mean, that may be the the cover story, but we know what really happened to George Trevor if you played the video games. Um, he was trapped inside the mansion that he helped design when the puzzles were altered by Oswell E. Spencer, and he couldn't solve the puzzles to get out, and, and he ended up dying inside. And these gruesome experiments that Lisa, that, that were done to Lisa, led to Umbrella discovering the Nemesis Tyrant virus and the G virus, but they are also transformed her into a deranged monstrosity, as you can see in that image back there and in the footage from the video game here. One of the scientists who experimented on her will be William, uh, Dr. William Birkin, played in Welcome to Raccoon City by Neil McDonough. So that's really cool that they're kind of tying that in, and obviously uh, William did work on Lisa a little bit in the video games because he was developing the G-virus from samples of her tissue, her infected tissue and stuff. So a uh, quote here from Johannes says, Lisa Trevor is actually quite a pivotal role in the movie. I was always fascinated by her when playing the remake of the first game. Me too, Johannes. Uh, Johannes continues by saying, I found her character both disturbing and at the same time strangely haunting. 
Um, he told IGN, when we were discussing how to bring this story to life, it was one of the elements that I really wanted to feature strongly as she was never been, she's never been in any of the films previous uh, with the uh, Paul Anderson movies. So I, you know, and again, like I always love that character. I always wanted to see some version of her in those other movies and they never did it. So I'm glad because now we get a version of her in this movie. Um, and Johanna says, I wanted her to be a three-dimensional character, not just a creepy specter. We cast Marina Mazepa, who had just done um, Malignant for James Wan. That was a, a James Wan movie produced movie um, recently, and she was the creature in that one. And he said, uh, and she really worked really hard in bringing that character to life in a way that I think fans are going to love so much in this film. So just commenting on her hard work, how much, you know, she had to sit through all the makeup and become the monster and then, you know, uh, and, and hopefully bring it to life in a great way. Um, he says she's terrifying, but also tragic. In the movie, we really connect her to Chris or to, I'm sorry, in the movie, we really connect her to Claire Redfield's story, starting with the orphanage where Claire grew up. Now, this I found interesting because it is kind of in the lore of the Resident Evil franchise that Claire and Chris, even though they're brother and sister, they were kind of, they, they were orphans. Like their parents had died at some point when they were young. So it sounds like maybe Claire, I mean, unless this is a typo or misquoted, um, but it sounds like Claire grew up at the orphanage that is going to play a part in the movie because you know, that's where Chief Brian Irons in the Resident Evil 2 remake, that's where he takes kids from because he, we find out in the games, he's a kind of a creepy dude who, you know, who um, takes little girls and kids and stuff. Uh, and he's the police chief and it's really grotesque. And, uh, and so that's like, that was hinted at majorly in the video games and shown in the video games. So it looks like Claire may have come from that same orphanage. And I'm going to guess she maybe even knew Lisa on some level or knew about Lisa um, because I think other kids in an orphanage were taken and experimented on as well, um, including Sherry Birkin, who will obviously be in this movie. And uh, and that's going to be someone Claire is trying to save. So I'm wondering if Claire's going to have like some kind of flashbacks or, or there's going to be the child she can save and the child she can't save. So like Lisa will be the monster that Claire is unable to save and Sherry's the the infected kid that she can save before she becomes like Elisa, that could be really well done. Again, like I said, if you combine Resident Evil 1 and 2, you can come up with interesting ways to blend these characters and their story arcs together. And if that's the case, I'm on board with that. Definitely on board with bringing Claire, um, her journey with Sherry into uh, uh, somehow reflecting uh, what happened to Lisa. I think that's fantastic. And that would be amazing. And so that's what perked me up and why I wanted to make these videos into three videos. Cause I knew I was going to talk a lot about this because that idea sounds amazing to me. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really, really excited for this. And then Johannes ended up, uh, ended the article by saying, or interview by saying, uh, fans of the game should know that Capcom was involved in the film's development and designs. He said, we worked very closely with Capcom. Every character and creature is from the game. And as such, I wanted to be as faithful as possible. I wanted to create a truly immersive feeling for the fans. Uh, but that also became the trickiest part of adapting a piece of IP like this, because I didn't just want to put the game on screen. It had to be its own thing with living, breathing characters and creatures. And of course, Zombie zombies that felt true to the world. So Johannes is at least winning me over a little bit by breaking things down like this. Um, I like that he said that I too don't just want an exact replica of the games on screen. If they're going to do that, I'd rather see it done as like an anime or something like that, something where you can spend more time with it. An adaptation should be just that. You take what matters most to the characters and you try to focus on those things. So hopefully that's the case. I could be, you know, putting stuff in there that's not true. I don't know. I'm just going off this quote and it says Claire and she grew up in the orphanage and I know she's going to be protecting Sherry at some point in the movie. So yeah, I'm pumped for this. Now I will say for one critique, I am not a fan of how the arms look of Lisa Trevor here. Uh, her arms look like regular length arms. Um, meanwhile, she has a big hunter in her back and she's standing up tall, which is very reminiscent of the games. Although in the game, she usually bends her knees a little bit and she can leap. And that's why she usually bends her knees. So I don't see a lot of that going on. Like th that hunchness played up more. And honestly, I feel like her arms to should be mutated more like tyrant arms. And like in the video games, they should almost drag on the ground. So when she's walking, she's dragging her knuckles and just cutting them up and bleeding everywhere. Um, I always thought that was a way more intense and, and interesting visual 
than what I see here on screen where her arms don't go all the way down um, and her, you know, she doesn't look like she's bending her knees to squat uh, because even though she bends her knees to squat and walks like that in the, in the games, she's still like eight feet tall or something or seven feet tall. Uh, so, so imagine if she stood upright, she would be like a tyrant size probably. So I, I loved her visuals in a video game and I wish a little bit more of that was brought to screen here with her hands going down to look creepier. But who knows, maybe, I don't know where this image came from. It's If it's 100% final, if she evolves in a movie, maybe this version of her we see early on, and then later on she mutates more. So we'll see. But apparently she's a pivotal character in the movie, and that makes me so, so happy. All right, that's it for me. I got all three of these episodes done, but now I got to go edit them. So I'm going to be working on that and try to get these up to you as soon as possible. Hopefully you've been enjoying the videos. And if you have, give us a like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll definitely come back with more Resident Evil stuff because I imagine we're going to get more information, more images, hopefully a trailer at some point. I mean, I, I feel like the train is starting to finally leave the station on this one and we can talk more and more about it. So I'm very excited to do that with y'all. And if you have opinions, whether you agree with me or not, uh, we keep it pretty chill around here. Let me know down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in Raccoon City. Peace.